Helm versus Customize, the ultimate Kubernetes deployment tools war. Who's going to win? Let's see. My name is Ahmed El Fakharani. I am a DevOps and GitOps instructor, and this is my channel. Before we start our discussion, let's have a look at why we'd even want to use Helm or Customize. Kubernetes has made it quite easy to create different environments for different use cases. You can use namespaces on the same cluster or even have multiple clusters. You can host dev, test, QA, UAT, staging, pre-prod, prod, the list can go on. But the question becomes how to manage all those environments. The first and most straightforward approach would be to create replicas of the same manifests directory and give each one a descriptive name. That is, control C, the source files, and control V for each environment. For simple projects where you need to make only a very few changes to each environment, the above approach may serve you well. For example, all the YAML manifests are exactly the same except for the image tag. Open the deployment.yaml file in each directory and make the change. Save, run kubectl apply hyphen f dot and you're done. However, most of the time the differences between environments are not that simple. The dev environment, for example, may use some container command arguments that allow debugging. They should not be available in QA or prod environments. QA deploys some sidecars for running some tests. Neither dev nor prod has that. Prod RBAC is more restrictive than the other two environments for obvious reasons, and that's not even half the story. The application got bigger and needs other dependent services, for example, a MySQL backend and a Redis cache server, each of which has its own manifests, configurations, settings, and environment differences. We need to implement a CI CD pipeline that would test, build, and deploy our application alongside its dependencies to multiple environments. As you can see, Using kubectl on its own becomes a nightmare. That's when we start exploring more advanced tools. We're specifically referring to Helm and Customize. Let's first explore how each of them can address the above challenges. Helm. Regarded as the Kubernetes Package Manager, Helm provides a way to package, distribute, and manage applications as charts. A Helm chart consists of a collection of templates and values files where templates define the Kubernetes resources, for example, deployments, services, config maps, and values files allow you to customize the template values. This way you can have a set of templates that has placeholders for parameters that change from one deployment or environment to the other. For example, the following is a Helm deployment template that takes the replicas count, image name, and tag, container port, and container startup arguments from a values file. Anything between the double curly braces are dynamic. That is, they get replaced with the actual values when the chart is deployed. A corresponding values file could look as follows. Notice that the .release.name and .chart.name variables are built in the chart itself. They are used to give Kubernetes components unique names in the cluster so that they can deploy several versions of the same chart to the same cluster. When Helm is applied to the cluster, the Kubernetes API server receives this. This way, we can have a different values file for each environment or use case. You can modify the source template for environment-wide changes, and you do that only once. For environment-specific changes, you can use the values file. Each environment can have its own values file. So in conclusion, Helm uses templates and values to construct YAML manifests. Let's have a look at Customize. Customize aims to provide the same result, but does not use templates. Instead, it allows you to keep an intact version of your YAML files in a directory. It's called base by convention, but you can name it however you like. You can create a directory or a directory tree for each environment, scenario, or use case. Each directory needs a YAML file called customization.yaml. The purpose of this file is to inform Customize about which manifest files it should consider and what changes it needs to apply to each one based on the instructions in that place. This is best demonstrated with an example. Let's see how we could use Customize to arrive at the same result as Helm. First, we need to create a directory structure. The contents of my app slash customization.yaml is as follows. Notice that it is a fully valid YAML that can be applied as is if necessary. To change this deployment to fit our environment needs, we use the overlay slash deployment.yaml, which should be something like this. The resulting file that gets sent to the Kubernetes API server becomes the following. To apply the same mechanism to our three environments, the directory structure could be like this. If there's an environment-wide change, you need to make it only once in the base deployment file and it will be propagated everywhere. 
Environment-specific changes are done in the customization file of the respective environment. Customize uses patches and overlays while keeping the source YAML intact. So now we know how each tool addresses our challenges, let's see the strengths and weaknesses points of each. Round 1. Installation and Setup Helm needs to be installed on your machine or server. While Customize has a separate package, it is already bundled with kubectl since version 1.14. So, unless you don't have or need kubectl on your system, Customize can be invoked by simply running kubectl-k. The winner is Customize. Round 2. Package Management since Helm is by definition a package manager, it offers repositories where you can search for and download a specific chart by its version. Consequently, you can also simultaneously install several versions of the same chart to the same cluster. Customize does not package its files into a deployable unit. We can achieve the same result roughly using git releases, for example, or other options. However, Helm provides this functionality out of the box. The winner here is Helm. Round 3. Templating Capabilities Helm relies entirely on Go templates. It also adds some functions borrowed from the Sprig library to make templating even more versatile. Customize does not use templating at all. Instead, it uses patches and overlays to modify YAML manifests on the fly before applying them to the cluster. Go is a fully-fledged programming language, so you can expect to find powerful text manipulation techniques, for example, loops like range and conditionals like if, else, and with. This can be useful in generating repetitive resources or making decisions based on user-provided values. Template functions via the Sprig library provides various functions like default, pick, omit, trim, upper, lower, code, and many others. Nevertheless, it has a few tricks under its sleeve too. For example, generators for config maps and secrets. These are specified declaratively and Customize generates the resources when building the final YAML. We also have variants. Customize uses overlays to manage different variations of the same application, which can help manage different environments like development, staging, and production. We also have transformers, which are used to update the fields of resources. Common transformers include adding a prefix or suffix to resource names, updating labels and annotations, and updating namespaces. Transformers can be applied selectively to different resources, offering a high degree of control. The winner here is a draw. But it depends on the level of customization you are after. Round 4. Debugging. Before applying them to the cluster, you need to test the YAML files for errors. YAML uses white spaces and indentation to define objects, lists, and other components. A single incorrect indentation can ruin the entire deployment. Help and Customize allow you to see the resulting YAML manifests before applying them to the cluster. Customize has the build command, which generates the final manifests after applying all the patches, overlays, transformers, etc. into a big file that contains the entire payload. But you can also run kubectl apply hyphen k hyphen hyphen dry hyphen run to validate the YAML manifests against the API server. Helm has several ways of doing the same thing. You can use the Helm template to render the YAML manifests before they are sent to the API server. You can also use Helm lint to check the chart against best practices. Using Helm install hyphen hyphen dry run or Helm upgrade, you can also test the manifests against the API server. Even if your YAML is correct syntax-wise, the API server may reject it for other reasons, for example, a missing CRD or an admission controller. Helm allows you to catch those errors before applying the payload to Kubernetes. This avoids having a broken chart that needs to be uninstalled and reinstalled. The winner here is, again, a draw. Round 5. Versioning and Rollback as mentioned earlier, Helm is capable of deploying several versions of the same chart to the same cluster at the same time. Helm refers to a deployment version as a revision. It maintains a history of the revisions deployed to the cluster and allows you to roll back to a previous revision when needed. While it is possible to do the same thing with Customize, the process is complex and error-prone. The winner here is Helm. Round 6. Secrets Management 
In many cases, you need to store some sensitive information as part of the application deployment. Think of API keys, user credentials, tokens, and others. In all cases, Kubernetes provides the secret object where you can save confidential information. Let's see how each tool handles secret creation. In Helm, we store the private data in the values to YAML file, where it can be converted to base64 on the fly in the secret YAML manifest using the b 64 inc function. The problem here is obvious. You must commit the values file, which contains the credentials, in plain text to version control. One possible solution is to create a separate values file for storing sensitive information and avoid including it in the Git repository by adding it to the .git ignore file. However, this adds another complexity since we are managing multiple values files now. In Customize, you can automatically use the Customize Secret Generator to create the secret YAML from plain files. For example, we can create the credentials files as follows. And the resulting manifest would be while username.txt and password.txt will too be added to .gitignore, you don't need to recreate them after running git clone or git pull in every deployment unless you want to modify the credentials. Storing sensitive information in base64 is as good as using plain text, since the base64 encoding is just an encoding format, not an encryption method. Anyone can convert a base64 string to its original format using a command line tool. Accordingly, the best practices entail that we encrypt secret data. Both Helm and Customize are capable of doing this by using third-party plugins. For example, if you are using Customize, you can use the Customize Secret Generator plugin, which enables you to fetch secrets from Google Cloud Secrets Manager, AWS Secrets Manager, or HashiCorp's Vault. The idea here is that the secret is stored in an encrypted form in one of the supported platforms. The user can rely on the plugin to fetch the secret, decrypt it, and apply it to the cluster when needed. The following demonstrates how Customize can do that with HashiCorp's Vault. While Helm has a Helm Secrets plugin, it does not offer native support for fetching secrets from other platforms. Instead, it uses Mozilla SOPS for encryption. The key can be stored in various key management systems such as AWS KMS, GCP, KMS, Azure, Key Vault, and PGP, for example. Helm Secrets Inc. Secrets.yaml. The above command encrypts the secret template at rest. Now you can commit it to Git. When you retrieve it on another machine, you need to decrypt the template before applying it to Kubernetes, like Helm Secrets Dec Secrets.yaml. The winner here is Customize. Round 7. Handling extremely large applications. When talking about applications with hundreds of manifests that contain thousands of lines, handling them using Helm templates can quickly become overwhelming. Customize, on the other hand, could be a better choice. For example, if you look at Kubeflow, which is the well-known Kubernetes-based machine learning platform, you will see that it uses Customize as a deployment tool. The reason is that the platform is overly huge and has many dependencies that need to be deployed in a specific order. To give you a better picture, this is a subset of the resources that need to be deployed. We haven't looked yet at patches or overlays. So the winner here is clearly Customize. Round 8. Integration with CI CD tools. Helm is widely adopted, thus it is more often supported out of the box by many CI CD tools. Customized support is growing, but it is not as widespread as Helm. The winner in this round is Helm. Round 9, which is the final one, Subcomponents and Dependencies. Helm has built-in support for dependency handling if your chart requires some prerequisites like for example a database, a cache server, OAuth service, etc. You can easily add them as dependencies to the chart.yaml file. Helm will ensure they are downloaded and available before running the main chart. You can also select which versions you require. With Customize, this is handled manually and on the user's side. The winner here is Helm. So, with the nine rounds between our opponents, the overall winner is Helm. However, there is no winner or loser here. 
Each tool has its own strengths and weakness points. It all depends on what you want to achieve in your project, its size, the number of environments you need to deploy to, and the level of complexity. This war aimed to show the difference between both tools, not to advocate one over the other. Many projects, in fact, use both tools together in the same code base. Help and Customize aim to serve the same purpose, making deploying large applications with many interdependent YAML manifests in a DevOps way easier. Each tool, however, has its use cases where it shines over the other. In this video, we try to put both tools facing each other and see their pros and cons. Choosing Helm or Customize in your next project depends on several factors, but we hope this video helps you make the right decision. If you enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel to receive the latest content as soon as it gets released. My name is Ahmed Al-Fakharani. Thanks for watching.